folk, and welcome back to another edition of the Prophet of Thought series right here on the old TPOT YouTube page. I'm your host X, of course, but you knew that already. That's why your black asses are here. Now today you can see from the title, and of course this is one of the old mama series, but there's a twist. There's a twist on it today. Sorry about that, y'all. The damn thing keep popping up. But there's a twist on it today. Because we're going to show you an old mama that doesn't care. And an old mama that does. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, y'all know I've been bringing y'all these court cases. And this first one we're bringing y'all is an old mama who does not care all right then we're going to get to the one who we think does so let's get at it fair use negroes fair use this is uh, Agatha Davis, accused of theft by shoplifting, willful obstruction of an officer, and criminal trespass uh, from November 3rd, 2022 at a Walmart. Uh, case number 22CR007590A. And Ms. Davis, you've been advised of your right to remain silent, and your attorney is going to be Ms. Kim. Ms. Kim, unless you want to hear the GCIC, I really just need to know how many cycles she's got. Okay, y'all heard the charges. She's locked up. She just got locked up the other day for stealing from Walmart, right? That's the charge. And you know, I don't condone stealing, but it's a relatively minor charge, all right? They're not going to give you the death penalty for stealing something out of Walmart. You know, I mean, the most I think you could probably get is maybe, I don't know, 60 days, 90 days, you know, six months, something like that. So, I mean, it's a relatively minor charge, but we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. 12 cycles. That's good. Thank you. Um, 12 cycles means she's had 12 encounters with law enforcement, by the way. But we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. Uh, Delenia King. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. All right. I understand that she does have a uh, prior incident from October 10th, 2022. I've read the warrants. Um, mm -hmm. I am uh, inclined towards a similar bond of $1,500 surety. Any objection? Now, she just got arrested a few days before this. And the judge let her out on a signature bond. By now, y'all know what that is. You pretty much sign and you walk on out of there free of charge, right? But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. You know what, Your Honor? That's fine. All right. <laughs> and uh, Miss Kim, why should I issue a um, a signature bond? She was just released uh, last month, and she's got um, almost the same charges. Just released last month, same charges. But we continue. Your Honor, she's pregnant right now. And oh, pregnant right now. Definitely an old mama. Because she's pregnant. She just got arrested a month ago. She's out there committing crimes while she's knocked up. But we continue. And she really needs to take care of herself and her three minor children. One of Oh, and she's got three more at home to boot. So she's an old mama for a fourth time. And you hear the public defender, and this particular public defender is like horrible. Like, I, I mean, this, this is a horrible public defender. And it's not even because she has a, a bad English, all right? It, she's just horrible. But she's explaining how she needs to get to her children now she's got one in her gut she's got three minor kids at the house so how come 
these children that she needs to take care of hasn't stopped her from ending up here. Because see, that's the thing, right? When you got these public defenders, they get up and they say, oh, well, you know, they got ties to the community. You know, they live here. They got kids. They got a this. They got a that. You know, they got a job. You know, their aunt is here. Their mom is here. You know, the dog is here. Their, their bird lives here. You know, they got a they got a, a hamster that's here. You know, all this kind of stuff. But this stuff doesn't stop these people from doing what they're doing. Just like this old mama here, having three kids at home and one in her gut has not stopped her from not only getting locked up a month ago, but getting locked up again a month after that. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Of them is also a newborn baby, Your Honor. Um, we would like to request for signature on bond because of the sake of those three kids and fourth one soon coming. Yeah, for the sake of the three kids and the fourth one coming. Now, like I said, stealing out of our department stores a relatively minor charge, indeed. But at the same time, you're asking the court to consider something that you yourself did not consider. Not only this time, but a month prior to this. See, that's the problem. It's different. Fine, you get knocked, you're stealing something out of the store, they let you sign, you walk out. You would assume these people will just learn their lesson. But no. She's right back here a month later. And I'm pretty sure she had another public defender or this one saying the same thing. She's pregnant. She's got three kids at home. She needs to get to. And they let her sign her name and she walked out. And what may be the case is that she might have been stealing as soon as she got out again. This time, however, she got caught. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. And I'm aware your, your honors are aware that on the October case, she received a signature bond, which she's violated with this arrest. Uh, I, I agree. <laughs> yep. Because part of the stipulations of that signature bond is that your ass don't get locked up again which she obviously has but we continue my case was a signature bond through the jail uh, we're going to maintain that uh but unfortunately this is i've read the warrants uh this is a situation that's quite egregious uh, miss davis has blatantly disregarded the terms of the prior bond she has blatantly disregarded the terms of the prior signature bond so we already know she's not getting another one. She's not. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. And uh, I am thinking of the children, and I'm really concerned about whether Miss Davis was thinking of her children. And uh oh, the judge says she's thinking of the children, but as I've been saying ever since this started was the old mama thinking of the children the only way that I could kind of uh, have some type of consideration for this woman is if maybe she was stealing food for the kids because they poor or milk or cereal or whatever something to feed the kids that's kind of where i uh, where i hover right if you're poor and you don't have money and you need to feed your kids i'm not that mad at you if you're out there stealing food I, i'm just not i mean I, i'm not that mad at you um as a person who grows their own food you know we grow fruits and vegetables 
you know, at the house. I don't think I would be mad at you if I came out and caught you stealing some tomatoes or caught you stealing some cucumbers or caught you stealing some melons or, you know, strawberries or whatever. I, I don't think I would be that mad at you. All right. I wouldn't want you coming back doing it again. Um, if I caught you, I probably wouldn't shoot you or sick the dog on you. I, I just think when it comes to food, it's a little different. Now, of course, she probably wasn't stealing food because I think the public defender would have mentioned that. Because we got to think about this, right? Whenever there's some type of uprising, right? You guys know, you know, the Black Lives Matter marches and the protests over police brutality. And in many of these cities, you know, there's looting, and there's fires and you know, people are breaking into Target, they're breaking into Best Buy, they're breaking into Walmart, they're breaking into supermarkets. And you look at the people who are stealing stuff out of those stores. A lot of them are coming out of there with TVs, sneakers, hair, other electronics, jewelry, clothing, not that often that you look and you see them running out of there with a shopping cart full of diapers or cereal or milk or bread or lunchables or anything because see me like I said I would not be that mad at people who stole food to feed their children and I don't think most people would be. I just don't think they would be that mad at people who are stealing to feed their children. But what I think we have here is a woman who's not stealing to feed her children. She's stealing to feed her habit or habits, if you will. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. It doesn't appear so. Bond is set at $1,500. It's $500 on each count. It's a surety bond. And the case is reset to uh, November 17. Now, she said it's $500 on each count. So it's $1,500 surety bond. So not only has she racked up another stealing charge, she's got two more charges on top of that. So this woman is not thinking about the children that she has at home or the one she's carrying around in her gut. She obviously has some type of problem. She's obviously a kleptomaniac, right? But she keeps getting locked up for stealing. And she probably has some type of drug habit. Like I said, she probably started right back stealing as soon as she got out the first time. This time, she just happened to get caught but we continue fair use nick rose fair use thanks your honor so does that go along with her other companion case also oh yes please uh that would be 22 cr 006775a on november i mean look at this woman let's just back it up a little bit look at her let's have a look at her What do you folk think? Is she stealing to feed those three babies at home? Was she stealing to feed some type of drug habit? You decide. Thank you, Your Honor. And look at her. She just is unconcerned. She just is out of it. And think about the three children that she's probably raising. Or should I say allegedly raising? What type of life do you think those kids have being raised by this old mama? How do you think they live? What do you think their, their education is like? 
What do you think their living conditions is like? And not only that, she has another one on the way. And y'all wonder why I talk about these old mamas the way that I do. And the sad thing is, when it comes to these old mamas, this isn't even the worst of them. She's relatively mild compared to some of the ones we've seen here on TPOT. I don't know, man. <laughs> Brothers climb on top of these women, boy, and a lot of times all you're doing, man, is sentencing these children to a life of misery, poverty, an old mama back and forth in and out of jail but I want to go to this next case because this one is interesting too I told y'all this next one is actually a mama who I think may have had enough of her kid mama might have had enough so let's go to the next story okay here we go so let me kind of set this up right as y'all know and i want y'all to concentrate on the young fella at the top left of your screen because that's who we're going to be talking about now this dude he's been arrested like many people here, they're arrested for, because this is a like a misdemeanor kind of court, right? Criminal trespassing, shoplifting, uh, you know, possession of marijuana, you know, things of that nature, uh, driving without a license, you know, that kind of stuff. Misdemeanor, but pretty minor stuff for the most part, right? Now, I believe this young fella to your left here, top left, is accused of possession of marijuana and criminal trespassing. But if you look down in the bottom, in the center position, his mom is going to show up here. Now, this story is a little different than the one I just showed you, good folk. This one here actually would indicate that his mom is concerned, at the very least, with his well-being and trying to keep him from going back to jail. But I'm going to let it roll, and of course, I'll be stopping it you know, uh, periodically and doing some commentary. So let's get at it. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Position number four, courtroom two. Okay. We have um, Maurice Deshaun Brown accused of criminal trespass and misdemeanor possession of marijuana from November 3rd, 2022 in case number 22 CR 007 588G. Mr. Brown, you've been advised to have your right to remain silent, and your attorney is going to be uh, Ms. Kim. Uh, Ms. Kim, uh, uh, we're going to first hear from... Uh okay, there is his, there's his mom. Bottom left row. That's his mother. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Um, Pre-trial with regards to his priors, if any... Ms. Harrison? Second arrest. First arrest was July of 2021 for hit and run. Duty of driver to return to scene of accident. Driving without a valid license. Fleeing or attempting to elude in Gwinnett. Okay. He has somewhat of a criminal record, but it's relatively limited. It's kind of small. They said it was hit and run. Uh, he didn't return. Uh, to the scene of an accident and I guess he was fleeing from the police so I mean his mother's there so we're assuming he's a minor right I mean because I look at his mom his mom looks like she's kind of young all right she could possibly be maybe in her 30s right looking at him he's probably I don't know 16 17 possibly but we continue fair use Nick Rose fair use no disposition listed on that arrest. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, Ms. Uh, King? 
Yes, Your Honor. The state is requesting a $1,500 surety in this case. That's $1,000 for the criminal trespass and $500 for the marijuana charge and a stay away from the incident location of 178 Maori Avenue, Southeast in Atlanta. The state is requesting a surety bond in this case due to um, the defendant and an, another un unidentified male breaking a window and making entry into a vacant apartment at the villages at Carver Apartment Complex. Okay, so he broke a window and then he broke into some vacant apartment. He got caught with uh, uh, some weed, so they probably broke in there to try to uh, go in there and smoke it. <laughs> but we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. There's an independent witness that stated she saw the two young men do this act and they were actually able to um, identify um, articles of clothing to the officer that the defendant was wearing. Um, the marijuana, marijuana was found search incident to arrest, Your Honor. Um, the state is concerned due to him having an open case, which he's out on bond for and committing um, another offense, which violates that bond, which makes the surety bond more than reasonable. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kim, on the criminal trespass, the bond is going to be uh, 3000 And on the misdemeanor possession of marijuana is 500 That's going to be a signature bond through pretrial services with a parent co-signer. Okay, with a parent co-signer. So that lets you know this dude is a minor, right? He's under 18. We already know that. She didn't even go to the public defender at all. She just said, look, this is what I'm going to do which was probably better because this public defender is horrible. <laughs> this is a horrible public defender. Out of the many public defenders that I've seen up here, this lady in the top right-hand corner has to be the absolute uh, worst amongst them. All right? She's one of the worst. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Can you identify the parent who is going to sign his bond? Yes, his father uh, has the same name, uh, Maurice Brown, without middle name. He will be the one who will sign. All right, Ms. Harrison's taking note of that. It will be his father, Maurice Brown. Now, his dad, because the judge just gave him a signature bond, right? And we always talk about these signature bonds. You can basically just sign your name and walk on out the door, right? But because he's a minor, all right, because the judge said, Remember, the judge said a parent has to sign. Therefore, we know he's a minor. So his dad is going to come there and sign to get him out of there. But we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. Yes. And I'm assuming that they live together at the same premises? No. His mother lives together. However, um, she his mother lives together. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, he lives with his mother, your honor. I think that's the phrase that this horrible public defender is looking for. But we continue. He does not have a car, so his father has to drive and pick him up. Can his father make... drive his mother? Uh, I don't think so because of the time frame, but I will double check, your honor. Right, I'll need his mother's name. She Greer. S H E E N A. Last name is. I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Kim. I'm going to. Have She's to on the line, Judge. Oh, mommy's on the I'm line. Yes, yes, Your Honor. She oh, mommy's on the line. <laughs> She's on the line. And um, Sheena Greer. Oh, there she is. Sheena yes. Greer. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, Miss Harrison, amend the cosigner to Sheena Greer, please. All right, Ms. Greer, um, your son has received a $3,500 signature bond through pretrial services. Yes. I will need you to make arrangements with his father or whoever you choose to have you drive down to pretrial services and co-sign his bond. You will need to bring your driver's license or your identity card, any government issue document that identifies you as Sheena Greer. Now, listen to all this stuff that the judge is saying. And this particular judge here, like I've said before, she's hard, but she is fair. But she's going to have to backpedal pretty much everything she's saying. And you will see why a little later in this clip. 
but we continue. Fair use, Negroes, fair use. Uh, it must have your current address on that ID and uh, you need to bring some kind of utility bill for that location. I need proof with pretrial that Mr. Maurice Dashon Brown uh, currently lives with you. Mr. Dashon Brown is subject to a 24 hour curfew. Uh, he is only allowed out of his home in order to attend school, to go to work, to um, seek medical treatment if required, if he wants to go to church and to attend court proceedings or speak to his attorney. And look how relatively calm his mother is. Usually when you see these old mamas up here, they run in their mouth, they blurting stuff out, they yelling, they screaming, the judge got to tell them to shut their ass up. She's relatively calm. Even though at the end of this, she's going to be the one to right the ship. And like I said, you'll see this also a few moments from now. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Those are the only exceptions in which he's allowed to uh, step out of his home until further order of the court. If he steps out of a home for any other reason and he's arrested again, he will be back in jail and he will have to pay for his bond the next time. His father. Uh, do we know the name of the um, the uh, co accomplice? I will look and see if we've gotten updated information. OJ, take just a second. All right. Miss um, Greer, do you know the name of the individual with whom uh, he was arrested? No, but I do know that his father was already on the way down there. Now, his father's already on the way down there to get this Negro. He obviously has a father in his life. His father's like, damn, my son's an idiot. He done broke into this place, got weed in his pocket. I got to go and get him out. <laughs> now his father is on the way and his father doesn't even know about it, what's going on here obviously because he's on his way driving to come get this negro the father doesn't know that he has a signature bond his father is heading down there already to go get his son all right now this is an example of parents actually caring about their son and their son is still a screw up these things these things happen i will admit it this is one of those cases where you have a parent in your life you have two parents in your life and you're still screwing up but we continue fair use nick rose fair use well call him and let him know that it'll be a wasted trip <laughs> The judge is like, call him and let him know it's a wasted trip. But hold on. Like I said, old mama is going to write this ship. We continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. All right. He's going to All right. So, uh, Miss Harrison, once uh, Mr. Maurice Brown shows up, Please let him know that he's not eligible to co-sign the bond. Yes, Judge. It has to be done by someone with whom he lives so that he can be monitored in order to make sure that he doesn't get into trouble again. But it would be best if his daddy do it for the simple fact that he can go stay with his daddy because it's the same complex. She says, you know, through that uh, Geechee speak, Luckily for you, Negroes, I'm fluent in Geech because I was raised by them. <laughs> I was raised by people who spoke like this. Um, what she's saying is it's better if she goes to stay with this old man because where he got in trouble at is the same apartment complex that he lives with her in. It's the same apartment complex. So his old man does not live there. So it would be better for him to go and live there. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. It's the same apartments. We don't know that, Miss Greer. 
All right, thank you. It's your son, Ms. Greer. Make sure you make the effort to have him released. Uh, if you want him to stay in jail, that the decision is entirely up to you. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, his next court date will be sent to... Notice how she was like, okay. Even after the judge was like, oh, well, you want him to stay in jail? That's on you. That's because mom has had enough of this boy. That's why she's so calm. Mom has figured it out that he has gotten too old for her to start raising him. This is an example of a mother who has owned her failure. Let me say that again. This mama here has owned the failure. Because I say again, his mom is very calm. She's not yelling. She's not screaming. She's not making excuses of why this. Nope. She's like, okay, you want to keep him in jail? Fine. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. His current address and I do apologize, I just lost that screen. Uh, Your Honor, it was Ms. Greer stating that the incident location is the same complex that she lives in and that the defendant will be living in? Yes, that's exactly what she's saying. I know it's hard to, to, to understand Geech because everybody don't speak it. That's exactly what she's saying, Solicitor General. That it would be better because where the incident took place that got him arrested is the very same apartment complex that she lives in. He just went over to the next building and, and broke into an apartment so he can go in there with his buddy and smoke some weed. That's what happened. <laughs> but we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. And look at the look on, on mom's face down there at the lower left. She's like, that's what I've been trying to tell y'all people. But we continue. That is what she's saying, Your Honor. That's oh why he needs to go back to his, he needs to go see his father. He needs to go and stay with his father. Yes. She done got tired of this Negro. She's uh, uh she's realizing. She done raised the loser. Yeah, she's realizing it. Like go stay. At your daddy's house, Negro. She's not trying to protect him here. He is not a husband's son. I think she's right. I think she's doing the right thing here. You want to live here and act up and smoke weed and break into apartments? Go over there and stay with your old man. See if it flies over there, Negro. I'm with old mom on this one. Yeah, I'm with mom on this one. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Okay. Where is, does his father live? His father stays off of Kellner Road. It's not It's not in these apartments. I stay in apartments where the incident happened. It is no need for him to be out here. He need to go over there with his father and for those of you like i said who don't who aren't fluent in geech like x is what she's saying is it doesn't make a lot of sense for him to come back here or be bonded out here because i live in the same damn complex that he broke into he broke into an apartment in this complex so he needs to go stay with his old man that's what she said y'all <laughs> but we continue fair use negroes fair use my goodness we did not know that of course you didn't she was trying to tell you that your honor because that address oh. 173 my address is 193 more avenue well we didn't know that was the same apartment complex so that's good information to know And still, you see how calm 
his mother is, even though at the end of this, she was right. She was right. And I think this is an example of a mother who actually cares. At least that's how it appears to me. Because she's the one saying, look, he got locked up in this apartment complex. So why bond him back to the same complex where he got arrested at when he can go and stay at his father's place, which is away from here? Now, maybe you good folk don't see it, but I think this is a mother who actually cares about this boy. She's concerned with his best interests, not hers. Because what we often see in these old mama cases, right? It's never really about the kid. It's about her. But I don't see this here. Because she's willing to go ahead and have him go live at his father's house just to keep him from getting in trouble again in that area. Like I said, I'm with mom on this one, y'all. I know that's hard for y'all to fathom. <laughs> being the old mama man himself, or as y'all would say, being these old mamas man himself but i'm with mom on this one but we continue fair use negroes fair use so 193 mori avenue is my apartment the 193 is an apartment number or a building number it's the building number 193 Maury Avenue, my apartment is 14. I see. And 178 Maury Avenue is in the same apartment complex? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I there. do apologize. I did not realize that. So I told you the judge would have to backpedal everything she said earlier. But we continue. Um, yeah, I guess we, uh, but if he has to stay away from the entire Carver Village apartments, uh, that means he cannot come back and stay with you. No shit, your honor. <laughs> That's what she's been saying. But we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. My goodness, Mr. Brown has really worked himself into a pickle. Um, if he, if he's does over he there. go to school in that area? No, he catches the bus. He goes to Phoenix Academy because he's trying to catch up on his credit so he can graduate this year because he's in 12th grade. Right. Where is that school from his home? Phoenix Academy, that is, um, that's on Memorial Drive, so he catches them all the bus anyway. All right. And where does father live, Mr. Brown? Chandler Road. And how far is that from his school? They're both about the same distance. I say County Road to Memorial. All right. To get to his father's house, it'll probably be like 10 minutes. Just like if, if you was in a car to get to my house, it'll be like 10 minutes. Okay, I know y'all probably need me to translate. Um, she said it would be, you know, better if he goes over there, stays with his old man. Uh, the distance from her house to the school is pretty much the same as the distance from her old man's house, from his old man's house to the school because they give him a, a martyr card anyway for those of you who don't know what a martyr card is it's sort of like a metro card in new york city you know you take it you can catch the bus you can catch the train you know etc cetera, etc cetera. it's basically a transportation card that can get you on the bus you know on the light rail on the train so that's what she said y'all but we continue fair use negroes fair use all right the school, provides, the school provides him a martyr card and Ms. Greer, does Mr. Brown realize that his son would have to stay with him? Yes. You see how calm his mom is? Because the way she's talking, the way mom is sitting there calm and talking, 
seems like to me she might have already got in con well obviously she already got in contact with him because his father's already on the way there to go get his black ass so mom might have said look this nigga over here acting a fool he breaking into apartments getting high you need to go down there and get him bail him out and take him right on to your house <laughs> Mom might have said that because it doesn't seem like to me because y'all have seen the ones I brought y'all up here where they mom get up there and say, oh, he's such a good kid. I can't believe he's doing this. He's such a good boy. After the boy done bit their hand or punched them in the eye or stabbed them, they up there. Oh, he's such a good boy, your honor. This was just a misunderstanding. Please be leaning on him. He didn't do nothing wrong. He's a good kid. Mom here is saying none of that. Mom is like, okay. She's like, okay, if you want to keep him locked up. She's like, okay, that he can't stay here no more. She's like, okay, his old man can come and get him and let him live with him. Because this may seem harsh, all right, how stoic she is and how calm she is. But I genuinely believe from what I'm seeing that this woman actually cares about this boy. She actually cares about this boy. And I say again, she's thinking about his best interests not her own but we continue fair use negroes fair use look at the look on the judge's face i don't think the judge can believe it she's like wow you're actually willing to you know let your kid go stay with his father as if that's a crime or i don't know but we continue he does yes Okay, in that effect, then we'll amend the cosigner. Uh, Ms. Harrison, I apologize. The cosigner, so sorry, you have to white out the information. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it will be Maurice Brown, the uh, father of uh, Maurice Deshaun Brown. Yeah, okay, it's no need for him to be in the same apartment that the incident happened in. I totally agree. There's no need for him to be in the same apartments where the incident took place. Mom is right. Mom is right. Told y'all. I'm with mom on this one. Surprisingly enough. <laughs> but we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. I totally agree. He needs to stay away from the entire apartment complex. Um, I'm going to allow you to make arrangements to pick up his personal belongings and have father brown come and pick him pick it up because he's not allowed back at those at that apartment complex all right no. the curfew no. provisions still apply he is still under a 24-hour curfew and he's only allowed to step out for the reasons i've set forth no problem okay um miss uh, greer do you know the complete address of uh, daddy brown hold on let me call him all right uh that's all right uh, mom do need to change that battery in that uh the smoke detector though <laughs> yeah mom need to change that battery but uh yeah i mean she got his ass there he's probably useless as hell he won't even do it so like i said mom is like okay fine you go stay with your old man I'm tired of your black ass anyway and guess what? That'll probably be better for him because obviously he's a teenager still, right? That will probably be better for him because the rules will be different. The guidelines will be different. The protocols will be different. The standards will be different. And I'm pretty sure that when he get to his old man house, this nonsense ain't going to be tolerated. Mom has had enough and she's willing to let go for his well-being. She 
she's thinking about him. Kudos to you, Mom. But we continue. Fair use, Nick Rose. Fair use. Uh, Miss um, Miss Harrison, once Mr. Maurice Brown comes to co-sign his bond, uh, please, if you have a chance, uh, get his complete address, and we can send that to Miss Katrina Lewis so she can update um, our information with regards to... Um, Sir, is there a phone number for the dad? Yes, I do. Auto four. Shall I check, Your Honor? I can check it to uh, Miss Harris. Yeah, send, send in the chat. And you see the public defender, right? She about to put the number out on the internet, right? And not only that, why didn't the public defender chime in and say what his mother said? Unless she didn't know. But even if she did not know, she should have found out, right? Right? She is the public defender, is she not? So how come she wasn't saying what his mother was saying? <sighs> but we continue. Fair use, Negroes. Fair use. Chat to Miss sure. Harrison and then sure. send it in the chat to Miss Lewis as well. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. That completes this case. Judge, excuse me. This is Katrina. I just want to clarify the conditions. He's to stay away from the whole apartment complex and the co-sign is his father and a 25-hour curfew on the church school work and seek medical attention. That's correct. Uh, he can step out for work, for school, for medical attention, and to uh, attend court proceedings or speak to his attorney. Yeah. All right. Your ass need to stay in the house unless you're going to school, going to the doctor, going to your job, or going to see your damn lawyer, or going to court. And like I said, mom is calm. Mom is like, okay, fine, Negro. Go on over there, stay with your old man. Let him deal with your bullshit. But I say again, I think this woman actually cares about this boy. She cares about him. And she's willing to let him go live with his father. Because she knows she knows that that's best for him. It's good to see a mother be concerned with the well-being of a kid. Even under these circumstances, because she was the one who was saying, look, there's no need for him to come back here because this is where he got arrested. I believe that if she was a selfish old mama, she would have still wanted him to come back there. She would have been pleading this case. Oh, judge, let him come back here. Yeah, I'll keep him from going, breaking into another apartment, having weed in his pocket. But no. She was the one who righted this ship. She was the one who set the court straight. She was the one who said the things that this so-called public defender should have been saying. Mom is the star of this here clip. And I know that's hard for y'all to believe that I'm saying this. Me being who I am. <laughs> but his mom is the star of this clip. And hopefully this young man gets over to his father's house and straighten the hell out. He's obviously still in school. That says something. And he obviously has parents who give a damn about him. Because his old man is already on the way to the jail. He's not privy to none of this information that we're looking at. He's on his way already. Now, he may have assumed, you know, he's a minor, so they're probably going to let him out anyway. Maybe he assumed that. But either way, this old man is on the way to get this boy. So obviously his old man cares for him. 
And from what I see here, so does his mom. He's fortunate. He's got parents that actually give a damn about his black ass. And hopefully this was just a couple uh, uh, bad decisions this boy has made. Hopefully he's not one of these kids who has parents who actually give a damn about him and he squanders it by screwing up and constantly getting arrested on drugs and back and forth to where he is now. Hopefully this young man understands how fortunate he is. And hopefully this is the last time he'll end up sitting here. But we'll see. Now, unlike the first story, that chick, she don't give a damn about her kids. You can tell that just by what she's doing. When her kids get this age, they'll probably be sitting uh, side by side, uh, uh, right where the young fella's sitting at the top left. She'll be sitting there with her kid. <laughs> they'll both be sitting there. But it makes a difference, man, who your parents are. It does. I can't say it enough. And I repeat, hopefully this young man understands how fortunate he is. More fortunate than most. Forget the fact that he's got a father who's willing to drive. I don't know how long to come get his black ass. He actually has a mother who will put his best interests in front of hers. But that's all. I appreciate everybody hanging out here today, man. You could have spent your time anywhere. You decided to spend it here and it is appreciated. I don't take you good folk lightly, man. I never have and I never will. You got my word on that. So, with that, I will leave you good folk with three words you know, like I always do. Open your mind. Peace, folk. These old mamas. <laughs> Only from TV over TV. <laughs>